All right, page 453 in your textbooks. You did numbers 1 through 18 in the homework section. And mostly what we've been working on lately, class, is solving equations. equations. An equation is a mathematical statement that has what in it, Corey? Numbers, letters. Usually there has to be at least one letter. Numbers usually in there. But what is it that makes it an equation? Because we could have numbers and letters without having an equation, Ben. An equal sign. An equal sign. you got to have an equal sign. Now, I told you that if we have words given, we can translate words into an equation. How do I know where the equal sign is, class? Is, was, am, is, are, was, were, beeping, Ben. You know, the verbs, right? We have the verb, but oftentimes a linking verb. Usually the word is tells us where our equal sign is going to be. And then we look for other words as well, like more than class means, add, less than means, subtract, product means, multiply, by quotient means, divide, you know, things like that. Difference means. Subtract. 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 Sum means add. add. So we look for those different words that tell us how to construct the equation, and we would solve from there. It is important, though, now that we're two equations that have multiple steps to solve them, where instead of just getting rid of one annoying sibling from your room, you now must get rid of two annoying siblings from your room. And we said this, you get rid of what first? Michael? The ones that best. Attached. The ones that are least attached. So whatever number is least attached to the variable, get rid of that first. There we go. And then uh, the more attached number, we'll get rid of second. So on number one on the homework, page 453, trying to get the x by itself, what number must be gotten rid of first, Joel? The, the, negative, seven. the negative seven. I'm glad he didn't say seven because it's not a seven. It's a negative seven. And we get rid of the negative seven by putting one on both sides. Positive seven. Then once that's done, we got to get rid of the four. How do we get rid of the four, Joel? Divide by four. Divide both sides by four. We end up getting what for our answer on number one? Six. Positive six. Number two, what did you get for your answer, Luciana? Um, a equals two. Ah, little tiny detail, Kirsten. A equals negative two. A equals negative two, right? Because you put a positive seven on both sides, so you get 12a equals negative 24. So make sure we don't lose that negative when we divide by the 12. Back to Luciana for redemption. What did you get for your answer on number three? Okay. Ah, okay. So you put a negative five on both sides, and that gave you a half p equals negative 14. And so we're going to multiply both sides by two, but don't lose that negative. Negative 14 times two would be okay. negative 20. And those negatives just keep tripping you up. Number four, what did you get for W on problem number four? What you got, Bryson? W equals 60. Very good. We're going to subtract a 19 or put a negative 19 first, then multiply both sides by 15. Number five, it was a few different steps to work out here. What had to happen first on this problem, Griffin? Um, you have to um, get to that exponent. Yeah, take care of that exponent. Simplify the other side first. Right? Anywhere we can simplify. It's 7 squared. We can certainly simplify to get... Um, 49. I'll be honest with you, I'm cool with you not rewriting it all with a 49, but just scribbling it out and putting a 49, like, I don't think that's a problem, right? We'd be a little bit lazy there. It's still not awful. It's not not neat at this point, in my opinion. Then what, right? Uh, sorry, he's Bryson, you're Griffin. Griffin. Um, subtract um, negative 13 from <coughs> positive 13 and do it to the other side. <laughs> Good. And technically, we're not subtracting negative 13. Does that mean the same as adding a positive 13? But put a negative 13 on both sides. I got what you meant. That gives us a negative 9t equals 36. 36. And then what do we have to do? Um, then we have to divide negative 9 under, from, from both sides. Good. The negatives here cancel. The 9s cancel. So there's the t by itself. What do we get for our answer, Luciana? I got 3 equals... 45. Oh, you tried to add a 9. You, you looked at negative 9t. You're like, oh, I can get rid of the negative 9 by putting a positive 9 on both sides. That's where you got 45. But careful, because it's being multiplied, bre uh, bracket, wow, I'm sorry, Griffin, whatever your name is. Hey, you in the shirt, okay? Uh, Griffin <laughs> is exactly right. Because it's being multiplied, Luciana, we're actually going to divide right here. What would that be if we divide it? Uh, would it be um, 4? Well, but positive divided by negative gives us a? Negative. 
So we should have negative four. There we go. 36 divided by nine is four, but positive divided by negative is negative. So negative four, our answer. Is that what you had, Griffin? Um, now I do. Now you do. What did you have before? What was your answer initially? Like 6.6. Oh my, okay. All right, questions on number five. Yes, sir. Is that supposed to be a prime E4? I don't know. Uh, probably not. Uh, number six. Once again, we got a few different steps to follow through here. And what do we need to do first, Jalen? Yeah, let's simplify this first to get, I'm sorry, 18. And I'm just going to scribble it out again and just put an 18 right there because that's not necessarily a not neat thing to do. It's, it's, we're, still, we're still okay. It still looks okay. Now what? Good. Put a positive 12 on both sides. That'll give me C over 2 equals 30. Now what have we got? <coughs> Multiply, because right now it's, we have a divided by 2, the opposite would be multiplied by 2, and that gives us C equals 60. Anyone perfect so far through the first six homework problems? Anyone perfect through the first six? Okay, a few of you are. These last couple I've worked out on the board, but are there any residual questions? Anyone still a little fuzzy on these last two, five and six? Did anyone miss one of the ones one through four you need to see it worked out on the board? Anyone got to miss so far one through four you need to see worked out? All right, well, let's take a look at, at number seven and uh, walk me through number seven, if you would, Elaine. So you need to do the negative 10 and then plus four to get negative, no, ne yeah, negative six. Good, combine these two terms together, subtract, keep the sign of the greater, get negative six. Okay, then what? And then you um, subtract 14 on both sides to get negative 20. Excellent, add and keep the sign, negative 20, that's uh, G over five equals that, and then? And then you multiply by 5 to get negative 100. Good. Signs are different, so we get a negative, and 20 times 5 is 100. How many have G equals negative 100? They're on number 7. Good. Many of us questions on 7. Number 8. Uh, let's see. we got a 9x negative 2x equals 7 times 9. Here we have to actually simplify both sides, Ben. On the left-hand side, what do I get when I simplify a 9x minus 2x, or 9x negative 2x? Uh, Give it uh, six. Nine seven, minus two? Seven. Positive. X. Seven X. There we go. Good. We get a seven X. So, yeah, so we're going to start by combining those X's. Again, you can't have multiple X's you're solving for. You can only have the one. Let's get a seven X. But on the other side, then, we also need to simplify. All right. Uh, multiply. Yeah, seven times nine is? Oh, end of year brain is kicking in, Kirsten. 63. You know these. You've known them for years. Just don't lose them here at the end. And then, then, to finish this out, how do we get the X by itself? Uh, cancel. Divide. Oh, wait, the... Seven. seven. And when I divide away the seven, now it will cancel, leaving me with X. But what I do to one side, class? Good. Yeah, good. So on the other side, then, we're also going to divide by seven. And what is 63 divided by seven? Nine. nine. There we go. I'm like, well, I got this now. Seven times nine is 63. 63 divided by seven is going to be right back to the nine. How many had nine for number eight? Uh, number nine, we have a 4Y plus 3 equals negative 5. Talk me through this one, Corey. Um, you got to put a negative 3 on this. Excellent. I like the way you said that. You have to add the negative 5 and negative 3 to get negative 8. Perfect. And then you've got to divide the 4 on both sides to get y equals negative 2. Excellent job. How many have the same answer for number 9? Let's take a look at number 10. And oh my, 0.4m minus 0.5 equals 1.1. Man, is this annoying. Uh, but Bryson is up for the challenge. Bryson, what do we do? Uh, you've got to uh, put the positive under 0.5. So a positive 0.5. And then uh, you got to put it, you got to you got to put the point positive 0.5 or the point positive one to get uh, 1.6, which will also have to bring down to 4m. Or 0.4m. Yeah. And then you have to divide it with the multiplication. 
and you have to do it to both sides. Uh, so you put a four in the bottom. Okay. Point four. Point four. And then cancel out the end, get the end, and then you get four. Because, can we really divide by a decimal, Bryson? No. So I'm going to have to go point, but I'm also going to have to go point, because what I do to the bottom, got to do to the top. So it really just becomes 16. divided by four. And that's where we get m equals four. How many did the same thing and got that same answer on number 10? Does it make sense now? Don't let the decimals throw you off. Just go through the steps carefully and meticulously. Number 11, we had an n over 5, positive 7, equals negative 7, negative 6. Let's go to Michael this time. What do we do? Um, first, we need to take the positive 7. Actually, no, on the right side. Good. on both sides, yep. And then um, add the negative 7 to the negative 13 to get a negative 20. Perfect. Then the N5, uh, uh, take a, make it multiplication. Good. Well, both sides. There you go. Multiply both sides by a 5 now to get? Uh, 100. Well, but the sides are different, so it's... Negative 100. Negative 100. There we go. How many had negative 100 there on number 11? Careful with those negative signs. Good, several of you. And last one, number 12, we have a 4y over 13 minus 3 equals negative 7. Joel, what do we do? Well, we need a negative 3. And we add the same verse, put a negative 3 on both sides. We put a negative 3 on both sides? No, no, no positive. A positive 3 on both sides. Good. Because a negative from cost would a negative 3 cancel with a negative 3? Not an addition, no. Division, yes. But put a positive 3 on both sides, Joel. So that now it says. And that's equal to a 4y over 13. Now here's the tricky part, Joel. What do I do now? Because both the 4 and the 13 are kind of attached to that y. I can get rid of both of them at one time. Good. Multiply class by the reciprocal is the word we're looking for there. Good. So we're going to multiply by the 13 over 4. Joel, it wouldn't hurt to put this negative 4 over 1. one. Don't lose the fact, by the way, class, that there is a negative right here. I'm going to draw a little arrow to it. Joel, we can cancel away the 4, but we don't cancel the negative, do we? It's still there. So our answer is? Negative 13. Negative 13. How many had negative 13? How many did it all right? Just ended up with a positive 13 because you lost the negative right at the end. Anyone in that boat? Be an easy thing to do. Questions on the 1 through 12. Any questions on those equations? Did anyone go 12 for 12? Wow, a few of you. How about 10 or 11 out of 12? You only missed one or two of them. All right. Any questions? Last call on those equations. Let's take a look at numbers 13 and 14 because these are going to turn into equations. And we got to think through how to represent it. Look at number 13. Read that for us if you would, Luciana. If 5 times a number is increased by 8, then the goal is 68. What is a number? Once again, class, when it talks about a number, we're simply going to represent the number, whatever it is, with a variable. a variable of some kind. So, Luciana, you want to choose what for your variable? E. E. So in that case, when it says if 5 times a number, we could say if 5 times E. So read it again, but you say E instead of a number. If 5 times E is increased by 8, then the goal is 68. What is the number? All right, how would I write that? 5E plus 8 equals 68. How many had the exact same thing, maybe with a different letter, but you had 5 times some number, some letter, increased by 8, result is 68. You had that same equation. Good. Any questions on where that came from now that you've seen it? Yes, sir. Why does he put E5 plus 8 equals 68? Uh, so remember we said in a term we always put the numerical coefficient before the literal coefficient. So we wouldn't say E5, but 5E. Um, so you're not necessarily wrong in what you did, just wrong in the way you wrote it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It's not about this equation, but is it okay if you put a 0? Not a zero, an O. Yeah, so there's a good question. Letters to avoid, right? Avoid L. Sorry, Luciana. Okay, avoid L. Why? Why would one? Because if you draw it wrong, unless you, I mean, if you draw a cursive, it's no big deal. But write an L like that, like, 
you know, Luciana, I mean, normally we'd capitalize it, but if you just put an L, it looks like a one. So we'd want to avoid that. What's another good letter, letter to avoid? Well, as he pointed out, class, O, o because O looks like a zero. zero. So we want to avoid O. Um, there are some other letters we might want to avoid. T, the way, now I will have to use T occasionally in algebra, but I never write it like that. Because it could look like a plus, plus sign. sign. I always draw with a little hook on the bottom, just so it's clear it's not a plus sign. Um, whenever I have to use an L, I always write it cursive so it's clear that it's an L. Um, there are some other letters. Um, like after the initial, you can avoid E or something? Well, yeah, not only because E later on is going to have an actual value. It's called Euler's number, but uh, that's, that's something we're going to get into much, much later. So for now, I'm cool with E. Z? The only downside to Z, if you're not careful, if you just kind of slop it down, class, Z can look like a two. So anytime I write a Z, and I'm okay with using it, I try to make sure I get nice, crisp, clear points on it so it's obviously not a two. Also, if my two is this tall, my Zs are that tall, so I can tell the difference. So, I mean, there's things we can do through neatness, but, I mean, if you're looking for the lazy way out, we just avoid some of these things. It'll help us a little bit. Anyway, um, now we got to solve this thing, don't we? And so we need to... Um, Figure out, well, what is E? What is this number? So, Luciana, what did you do next? We have to add the inverse, which is negative 8, both sides. We get 0, well, we got 5 eighths, and then we got 6 eighths. And now we got to um, add the inverse for 5. Mm -hmm. The 8 is a separate term, so when I add its inverse, it cancels. This isn't a separate term from the E. It's being, so what do I have to do? Oh, divide it. There we go. Divide the 5 from both sides to get what, what e? And 12. E equals 12. How many had 12 was that number? 12 was that number. Did you have 55 for your number? No, I had 12. I you did have 12. Just in the moment, your brain kind of glitched on you a little bit. You were thinking to put a negative 5. Okay? Questions, comments on 13? All right, number 14. Read that one for us if you would, Kirsten. 10 less than 1 sixth of a number is 1. What is the number? Huh. Again, instead of a number, let's replace that with some letter, Kirsten. X. X. Okay. So read it again, but instead of saying a number, say X. 10 less than 1 of X is 1. What All is right. the number? All right. So how would we, uh, how would we write that? 1 6 X negative 10 equals 1. Outstanding job. She remembered that less than meant subtract, but it also meant flip. So not 10 minus, but something minus 10. 1 sixth of, she remembered that of means multiply, so 1 sixth of a number, 1 sixth x, and then the, of course, is 1 equals 1. How many had that same equation? Just maybe you used a different letter. All right, questions on this? All right, what? I'm trying to grab my hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> questions on this. All right, so take it from here, Kirsten. What do we do to solve for the x now? Put a positive 10 on both sides. Good, I love the way you phrase that. Put a positive 10 on both sides. And that will make it 1, 6x equals 11. Good. And then multiply 1, 6 times 6 over 1. Good, multiply a 6 over 1 times this. And then those cancel. And then you do the same thing to the 11. Multiply by... What, six over one. Six over one. And we don't necessarily have to write the over one if we don't want to, but we would get... 66. There we go. So x is equal to 66. That's not an order. All right. Um, for Star Wars fans. All right. How many got that answer for number 14? Got that answer. All right. Questions on 13 and 14. Because we hadn't really practiced writing the more involved equations yet. That's going to be doing a little bit more today. So you get a chance to kind of preview what we're going to work on a little bit later on today. Questions, Joel? Well, I accidentally put it on the wrong word, but I got the right answer. Did you, did you, what did you say? I said 10 minus 1 half x. 1 half x or 1 sixth x? 1 sixth x. Is equal to 1. And did you put a negative 10 on both sides like you were supposed to? No. Ah, so you made a few different mistakes then. So we got it backwards, but you also added a 10, even though technically it would have been 20 here, right? And then I'm guessing you lost the negative right here. So you didn't multiply by negative 6 over 1, but you multiply just by 6 over 1. You kind of lost the negative. So it was a third mistake. So three mistakes turned out to be correct for you. Um, but as we already said, even though you, okay, you got the correct answer, you get some of the credit, 
we lose half the credit by getting the wrong equation in the first place. So we want to make sure we get it correct. So just remember the than means flip it around and watch for that. All right, questions on that? Any other questions? That was a good question. But anything else? All right, numbers 15 to 18, write some ratios. 12 children, 60 adults, boarded the afternoon train. What's the ratio of children to adults? What you got, Jalen? 1 to 5. Good, 12 to 60 reduces to 1 to 5. Number 16, 10 pizzas and 48 tacos were ordered during the lunch rush. What is the ratio of tacos to pizzas ordered, Ben? 48 to 10. Good, let's reduce by 2, though. 48 to 10 is not wrong, but let's take a 2 out and get it down to? No, 24 to 5. Excellent job. Good job doing it in the head, too. That was impressive. 24 to 5. Number 17. Farmer has 20 goats or 20 cows and 45 goats, one of whom can apparently walk on a fence and eat off the pitchfork. Um, what is the ratio of cows to total livestock, Michael? 4 to 13. Good. Initially 20 to 65, but I like that you reduced it down there. 4 to 13. Great job. Number 18. An artist drew 18 ink sketches and 28 pencil sketches all of them during math class in the side margin of his book. Just kidding. All right, uh, <laughs> the ratio of pencil sketches to total sketches, what would that be? And Griffin looks guilty back there. Guil uh, guilty, I mean, uh, Griffin? 14 to 23. 14 to 23. Initially, what would that be? A 28 to 46, but reduced down 14 to 23. I will not lie. I was, I was one of those, even in college, I gave the college supplement, you get taking notes, and all around the notes are all the different random sketches, because I don't know, I don't sit still real well. So anyway, I, I can I at least understand, you know. I'm, even though I'm on the other side of the aisle and I'm supposed to condemn it now, I still I still understand the desire to draw mustaches on people. All right. Anyway, <laughs> questions on these. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. He's I say they ruined your fun on the farmer. They already put a mustache on the farmer. He doesn't know where to put one. Add a beard to the long chin. All right. Questions. All right. Flip back if you want to page four fifty one. Flip back to page 451. I want you to do numbers 7 through 12. Page 451, you're working numbers 7 through 12, finishing up that page. We uh, would have liked to have gotten this done yesterday, just kind of ran out of time, so we'll work on that pickup there today. Bless you. finished. Oh. Am I going crazy or did you just change that clock? I did. That was, I was about to say. That was Kirsten's, that was Kirsten's teacher know. appreciation gift. We got a new clock in here now. Oh. You thought you were trouble telling yeah. time before. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Just remember where the numbers were. <laughs> I think that's eight. <laughs> no, I think that's seven. Just have to do some quick math. Quick math. Okay, okay. Let me see, let me see if I can do this without uh, showing the, the 
class on camera. Here we go. All right. So anyway, there's my new uh, my new clock in my classroom for all those who didn't care because they were watching on YouTube. But there we go. New clock. Thanks to Kirsten. So. And that's my ceiling. That's twelve. I think it's seven. No, it's nine thirty-five. Nine thirty-five. Yeah, it's not no. oh, it's not. I thought it was not. Is this what you wanted? Yeah. Kirsten's yeah. evil plan has now been accomplished. Everyone's yeah. going to be late Watch to class. Watching Sunday school when the adults are in here, they try to look at the clock. Uh, Just a mess. <laughs> All right, shh. All right, let's try to get some work done here. Okay, I know it's exciting having a new clock, but uh, no, are we no, done with seven no. through twelve yet? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. How many finished with seven through twelve? All right. Let's 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 wait till the, the second hand gets all the way back around again, and we'll give you one more minute. The second hand is the one that keeps moving constantly and visibly. Technically, the other ones are still moving too. You just don't notice it because it's imperceptible. Wow, this class is fun. Oh, it's nice going. Oh, it looks sharp. It looks confusing. <laughs> It was at the four plus two. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful. How did that one yeah. go into the theater lab? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Finally on time. Yeah. Yeah. Watch that one. Oh, oh no, my no. Thanks, 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 thanks. Yeah, why isn't there a clock? Wait, that hand moves smoothly. The first, the second one is moving smooth. Smooth. Like for twenty bucks. Like you like pocket experience? Yes. No. All right. This looks nice. People on YouTube are getting impatient. We need to get moving. <laughs> I'm getting impatient. Let's take a look at these together. Number seven. What did you get for your answer, Michael? Uh, forty-two. Oh, the pain, the pain, the pain, Michael. I know what you did. You had v over six plus five equals, and you said in your head five minus three is two. I'm going to be lazy. I'm not even going to write five minus three because I know it's two. I said, well, I also know what 2 plus 5 is. That's 7, right? Wait a second. Oh. oh. What are we supposed to do to get rid of this positive 5, Michael? Put a negative 5. Put a negative 5, which does not give 7, Michael. It gives negative 3. So we multiply both sides by 6, which you did correctly. It's not 7 times 6 is 42, but negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Negative 18 should have been our answer. Number eight, what did you get for your answer for redemption, Michael? Uh, three equals three. Oh, the pain, the pain, the pain. <laughs> All right, so we had a 2v minus 1 equals 9 thirds. I thought you were done awfully fast. Um, a 2v <laughs> minus 1 equals 9 over 3. Well, I think you started by saying that 9 divided by 3 is? Oh, what? Oh, nine. oh 3. 3, right? And then what did you have to do next? Um, so I had to change the negative one to a positive one. We don't change sides. it, we just add a positive one, but we get what? Uh, four. 2v equals four, and then? Divide two by four, and Well, four by two. Four, and I, and you get two. V equals two, should have been our answer. But you know what they say, Michael, third tries the charm. Mm -hmm. Number nine, what did you get, Michael? Mm -hmm. Two equals seven. Oh, the pain, oh, the pain, no. the pain. Wait, 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 wait. Was it 25? No. Well, the, uh, the other side has a 25 when you square the 5, Michael. Let's go from here. What do we need to do now? Uh, oh. It's negative 3. I mean, add a positive 3 on both sides. There we go to get. Uh, positive 25. 25. 25 plus 3 is 28. There we go. And over here, we still have no. Don't lose the negative here, Michael. That's a negative 4t. So that on our next step, we need to uh, divide both sides by a uh, negative four. To be uh, negative seven. Negative seven. So you're really close, but it's a negative seven to lose that negative. Oh, but you know what they say, Michael? I missed a negative. Yeah, you know what they say? Fourth tries the charm. So, Michael, on number 10, what did you get for your answer? I got. C equals 32. Yes, we got it. C yeah, equals 32. I knew fourth try would be the charm. All right, number 11. <laughs> number 11, Joel, what did you get? Negative 24. Negative 24 is correct. And number 12, what did you get, Griffin? Eight. Eight is correct. Did anyone go six for six on these? You got all of seven through 12 correct. 
Okay, only a couple of you then. So Michael doesn't feel so bad now. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, questions on any of these? We showed the I showed the first three. Does anyone need to see anything on the bottom row, Luciana? Well, the, was eleven negative twenty-four or just twenty-four? Negative twenty-four. Did you miss the negative? Yes. Yeah, so right here, a g over 3 plus 14 equals 6. You put a negative 14 on both sides. Don't forget, we've got to keep the sign. So it's not 8, but negative 8. So that when we multiply both sides by 3, there's our negative 24. Okay, good. Yes, sir? Yeah, number 10. We, I assume we multiply 5 times 3 to get the 15 initially, right? Hey. All right, we multiply 5 times 3 initially to get the c over 4 plus 7 equals 15. Did you put a negative 7 on both sides to get c over 4 equals 8? And then multiply the 4 on both sides to get the 32. Somehow I got 6. And you got six 8 times, times four. 4. Oh, right. Here you got 6. So be careful on your subtraction. But you put the negative 7. And again, this is where class, you, if he shows all the steps, and for whatever reason, he's got a 6 here. Because he knows, hey, we're human. Our brains mess up. He understands the algebra. He knows how to solve equations. He's just human and messed up. He's going to get most of the credit. Right? If it's 10 points, he probably only loses three. Right? If it's a three or four point test problem, probably only loses one there. Okay? So show the work so that we can get some partial credit if your brain has a little glitch or something. Any other questions, 7 through 12? Flip the page. And let me have you do 14 to 20, just the evens. Do that little diamond of even problems. Page 452, let's do 14 to 20, just the even problems. So do a little diamond arrangement, four more of these, and then we will move on. We'll skip over the odds for today. Why don't you double check your answers, make sure you got it all right. <laughs> hey, I'll say this though, if you're going to make mistakes, make it during classwork, right? Make it during classwork and homework rather than quizzes and tests. Because every time you make a mistake, if you're a wise man, you'll learn from it, right? So it's okay to make mistakes so long as we learn from them and so long as we make them at a time when it doesn't hurt us. And right now you make the mistake, maybe there's a tiny bit of embarrassment. I'm not trying to make it embarrassing, maybe there's a tiny bit of it, but it doesn't actually hurt you like it would on a quiz or test. So. Just a little bit longer to be finishing up. Are you finished?
visit artists and recording editors. So, do exactly what I'm showing in class. No pun or shortcut. Okay? Your success is by doing it exactly the way I teach you. There's a reason I teach it the way I do. All right, let's take a look at these. Number 14. All right, Michael, first try this time. What you got? I got B equals 42. Oh! oh. 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 So close yet so far, Joel. Uh, I got the same thing. You got the same thing? Negative 42. Negative 42. Because oh. <laughs> when you put that positive 10 on both sides, you have a negative 35. So when you multiply by 6 fifths, oh. there's still that <laughs> negative sitting there. Don't lose the negatives. Okay. <clears throat> Second try. Uh, here we go, Michael. What? <laughs> Joel? Oh, my. <laughs> negative 98. <laughs> we put a negative 3 on both sides, gives us a negative 14, which when I multiply that by the 7, gives negative 98. Don't lose that negative. Number 18. No. Michael. Oh, this was a fun one. I don't Oh, T equals 2. There we go. Hey, give him a harder problem, he gets it right. T equals 2 is correct. Now, here's the question. How many of the rest of you also got T equals 2? Oh, man. Oh, so there were a few others, but there were some who did not get it. We'll look at that in just a moment. How about number 20? Why not, Michael? You already got one, but let's just finish it out here. Um, X equals 33. X equals 33. So we got half of them there. Let's take a look at 18, because there were several of you who said you did not get it. Right at the beginning, do you notice, class, there are two different T's? You can't have two of them. You've got to combine them. But the signs are different, class. So do we add or subtract? Subtract, subtract to get 18. 18 T. And we're going to keep which sign, the positive or the negative? Positive. The positive, because it's bigger. We don't have to write it. We could leave it understood. And of course, we have a plus 1. And on the other side, it said 7 squared minus 12. Well, not 7 squared, class. 49. 49, but not 14. 7 times 7, 49 minus 12, ends up giving us here a 37. From here, we need to get rid of the positive one. What do I do to get rid of the positive one, Ben? Uh, make it a negative. Put a negative one on both sides. That's going to give me 18t equals 36. 36. And then to finish it out, let's divide away the 18. 18. And 18 does go into 36 exactly two times. Do we need to see any others 14, 16, or 20 worked out? 14, 16, or 20. All right, flip back now, if you would, to page 450. Now let's just look at a couple of these problems here, very similar to the couple that you had in your homework on page 450. And uh, read that first example problem for us, if you would, Jalen. Um, no, 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 in the example problem oh. section. All right, do you see class, it says the sum. Well, what does sum mean? Addition. Addition. So we're going to add some things together. Well, what are we going to add? Well, it says the <laughs> sum of twice, twice. twice a number. Well, we don't know what the number is. We could call it like they did x. So twice a number class would be 2x. Two. Two okay, so we're going to add 2x. And what else are we going to add? Well, it says the sum of twice a number and 11. 11. Do you notice then they added 2x plus 11? And it says is 45. Of course, class, we know that means equals, equals 45. So they added 2x plus 11 equals 45. From there they solved. Subtracted the 11 away, divided the 2 away, got 17. Questions on the first example? Read part B of that example problem for us. Ben. 6 is less than... Not 6 is. 6 less than 3 times a number is 51. What does less than mean, class? Two things, actually. Subtract. It means subtract, but it also means flip. flip. So subtract and flip. So 6 less than 3 times a number. Well, 3 times a number is what we have to start with because we're supposed to flip it. How would we say 3 times a number? 3x. 3x, or 3 times any letter. They chose n this time. So 3n. But 6 less than that means 3n class minus, minus 6. So hence they add 3n minus 6. And it says equals 51, so, or is 51, so they wrote... Equals 51. Do we see where they got their equation from? Mm -hmm. All right. Do we feel like we can translate their words into equations? From there, of course, they added the 6, divided the 3, got 19. All right. Flip back over to page 452 now and do number 22. Back to page 452 and do number 22. 5 less than 2 times a number is 13. Mm -hmm. 
write the equation, and then you may need to do this on separate paper, solve it. There's not a whole lot of room to work once you've written it. And Kirsten, what was your equation? 2x negative 5 equals 13. How many had 2x minus 5 or 2x negative 5 equals 13? I do like the negative there, by the way. Good questions on that. And then what was your number then, Kirsten? Um, 9. 9 was the number. Good. How many also had 9 when you solved it? Do number 23. If 4 times the number is increased by 6, the result is 58. What is the number? If 4 times the number is increased by 6, the result is 58. What is the number? Write the equation and solve. Oh, you were reading the clock. You weren't raising your hand. Well, the big hand is just a little past 15 minus 5. What's 15 minus 5? 10. So that means the big hand is just a little past 10. Oh, that's not it. Anybody get the math? I now. <laughs> All right, Jalen, what was your equation? How many had something like 4j plus 6 equals 58? Though you may have used a different letter than j. And what was your number, uh, Jalen? 13 is correct. How many also had 13 as your number? All right, look at number 24. At your seats, write the equation and solve. The sum of twice a number and 8 is 44. What is the number? Do number 24. And Ben, what was your equation for number 24? Plus 2p8 equals 44. Well, we know we're going to add, right? So we put a plus sign, but we understand we can't put something just after a plus. So it has to be something before and after, right? So what goes before has to be twice a number. So you said for twice a number, that's going to be 2p. But let's put that before the plus sign. Then the other thing that has to be added, it says the sum of this and that. Well, what was the that that was also added? Eight. The 8. So you see how we're going to put the 2p plus the 8 on opposite sides of the plus sign? And then, of course, you finished with? Equals 44. Equals 44. How many have this equation? Though, again, you may have chosen a different letter. All right, and what do we get for our number, Elaine? D equals 18. You used D. Uh, he would have used P equals 18. How many have 18 for that number? Last one, number 25, the average cost of a gallon of gasoline in Hong Kong on May 1st, 2018 was $7.86. That's ridiculous. This cost was $1.11 less than three times the average amount paid by residents of the United States. Now, we understand, depending on where you live in the U.S., gas can be different prices. Like, you live in California. Shout out to my California viewers. <laughs> um, you pay a lot more than we are here, right? So as of today, we were paying, I think last night I paid uh, 321, which is still ridiculous, but California people would love to be paying 321, I'm sure. Okay, so anyway, this amount, the Hong Kong amount was $1.11 less than three times the US amount. Do we see, class, that there are two different prices given here? Mm -hmm. One of the prices is for people in the? Hong Kong. Hong Kong, we'll say HK. And the other for people in the? Yeah. Yeah. U.S. Now, one of these numbers we know. We know how much it cost in uh -huh. Hong Kong. It was? 786. We don't know how much it cost in the U.S., so we could represent that U. 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 Okay? 
Now, let's take a look. It says, look at that second sentence. This cost. What cost, class? This. What is it talking about? You. Mm -hmm. This cost. What's it referring to? $7. The seven eighty six it just ended with. Do you see that? This is referring to something previously stated. Seven eighty six was. Wait, how do we represent was? Equal. Seven eighty six was a dollar eleven less than three times the amount paid by people in the U.S. At your seats, write the equation. This cost, the Hong Kong cost, stay with me, was a dollar eleven less than three times the amount paid by people in the U.S. What is our equation here, Joel? Three times three x. Or three u, if we go with our letter here on the board. But yes, three u. Three u negative one dollar eleven cents equals seven dollars and eight six. Good. Now, many of you may have said $7.86 equals this. This is actually the way it's described. This cost was $1.11 less than, so flip it, three times the cost in the U.S. He wrote it this way so he didn't have to worry about the U being after the equal sign. And that's fine as well. How many had that equation? From here, class, we would need to add a positive $1.11. And that'll give us 3U is equal to, what is this, $8.97? Yes. Divide both sides by 3, anyone? Two ninety nine. We got two ninety nine going on in the U.S. back on that date back in twenty eighteen. It's pretty high back then. It's still pretty high now. Questions on it? All right. No homework this evening. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You are dismissed.